Welcome to my first knitting vlog of the new year. January is always such an optimistic and exciting time. I really try and prioritise finishing up my old projects and thinking about how I want to start the new year fresh with the pieces that I'm going to cast on. In the spirit of finishing the old and starting the new, I have several projects to share with you today, some of which you may have already seen over on my Instagram, but I really wanted to share them in a video to kind of tie up any loose ends and show you the final stages of my process. If you don't already follow me over on Instagram, do make sure that you check it out. I'll link it down below and on the screen here for you because I share a lot more content over on there, especially about how I style my knits day to day. And I also have fun things like polls over in my stories where you guys can tell me what project I should cast on next. My first finished object is a really lovely piece that required a lot of work because of the small needle size. And that is my Kimberly sweater by the French designer Morichette C. This is such a classic and timeless staple piece that I'm really happy I decided to add to my wardrobe. Many people may initially look at the pattern of this piece and not be entirely certain whether it would be something that would go with everything and work as such a sort of staple. But I felt like this cable and lace work design that runs down the front and back would be just the right thing to add a bit of femininity and interest to what is a very basic and classic construction. Now, as I mentioned before, when I talked about this sweater, the construction is from the bottom up, which is not always completely in my comfort zone. I do tend to prefer to knit from the top down because that allows me to try it on several times to make sure I'm getting the exact right length. However, I am really happy to report that I took very detailed measurements and I made extra extra sure that this was going to hit me at just the right place. Because with a simple sweater like this one, I do want the fit and the length to be exactly right or I just feel like I'm probably not gonna get as much wear out of it if I'm not completely 100% sold on it. So the finishing was really, really important. Not only did I pay a lot of attention to the length and where it hit me, which was just kind of on the hip bone, but I also made sure that the details of the collar were exactly right, because I felt like there wasn't a lot else to really carry the eye if you look at a simple sweater like this. And if there's any mistake, it's really a telltale sign of the fact that it's handmade. And that actually brings me to one of my goals for the new year. When I'm looking at my knitting, especially now we're in January and I'm in that full kind of planning mode and I'm sitting down, I'm making my lists, I'm getting the Pinterest going. I have been thinking a lot about what sort of knits I really want to make. And as some of you will know, because um, I've spoken about it quite a bit, I have been focused on kind of using very small needles and making things that have a really neat finish. I always prioritise making pieces that are timeless. I mean, sometimes I do dabble with slightly more trendy or kind of cute pieces. The project that I actually posted a few weeks ago of my bow sweater is the perfect example of that, of something that I saw and I just wanted to recreate. But for the most part, this year, I want to pair it back even more. I want to focus on techniques and I want to focus on getting absolutely immaculate finishes. I actually think I want to be a little bit more strict with myself and I want to say it's okay to frog and start over if I'm not completely happy. Because knitting takes such a long time and there are a few things that I've made that I kind of wish I spent just a little bit longer perfecting. And one of my big resolutions is to not feel like that anymore. <laughs> However, I'm really happy to say that this Kimberly sweater was an example of adding a bit of extra time and attention really paying off. And I'm so ecstatic about the finished look of this gorgeous sweater. Now here I styled it with a beautiful festive outfit, which was very kindly sent to me by Suzanne. And I love how sort of seasonal this looked. And I just think that it gives me so much joy. The combination of the soft and feminine mohair sweater with this gorgeous plush velvet blazer and trouser set is just lovely. And it's really comfortable, warm, but also very stylish. 
Now the Kimberly sweater is knit up on very, very small needles. I believe it's three or 3.5 millimeter. I will of course have a Ravelry page with all the details um, linked down below for you if you're interested in this piece. And it's knit in a really beautiful combination of the Hobby Friends Merino and Kid Silk, which is a yarn that I have used before and I think really holds up when you wash and block it. This merino yarn is a super wash yarn, so I know I don't have to be too precious with it, which is something I quite like for a sweater like this that I envision getting quite a lot of wear out of, maybe pairing it with shirts underneath or, you know, dressing it up and down, wearing it throughout the whole of the autumn and the winter. And this yarn combination, when you're working it up, it is soft, but it's not as soft as some other merino and mohair combinations I've used. However, I feel like there is quite a coating on these yarns because as soon as I washed it and hanged it out to dry, and I did blast it a little bit with my blow dryer because the winter means it is extremely cold in my flat and stuff just doesn't want to dry. I was really happy with how the yarn puffed up and became extremely soft, smooth and snuggly. I think that the quality of this yarn combination really shines once you've blocked it and I just know that this is a piece that I'm going to wear time and time again. Now my second finished object is a much smaller piece that also still carries some of that sort of Christmassy and slightly festive flair. This is actually a piece that I haven't properly shared yet because I wanted to make sure that I would capture it in all its cuteness and glory. And this is the Maxine Hot Water Bottle Cover made by a fellow podcaster here on YouTube and that is Penrose Knits. Now this pattern, when I initially saw the picture of it, I just thought, oh my goodness, that is the most perfect little hot water bottle cover. I love the fact that it allows me to challenge myself with knitting several different colours. And a beautiful thing about this pattern um, is that it does give you options to use, I think it's three colours or six colours. So if you're feeling really ambitious, which I wasn't this time, but I might be next time, you can add in a lot of different vibrant kind of hues and really challenge yourself with the colour work. Now, although I would actually call myself an intermediate colour work knitter, I haven't actually really experimented with knitting more than two colours in one project. Apart from my scout shawl, which unfortunately I did frog, because um, I wasn't quite sure about the colour combinations of. So this was another good challenge for me to try something new, but on a very small scale and kind of in the round in a very simple way. I was a little bit concerned when I started knitting the colour work that it was going to be a bit tight. However, I'm happy to say that since using it and having the hot water bottle in it, everything has blocked out to be extremely smooth and in this kind of beautiful, gorgeous, firm colour work fabric. I didn't actually have to wash and properly block this piece because I was fairly confident that my hot water bottle would do most of that work for me. And that turned out to be right. In just one use, it kind of blocked itself, really. Of course, the wonderful thing about knitting your own hot water bottle cover in a yarn like this Drops Lima is the fact that it really feels insulating and cosy to your hot water bottle. I do find that using wool covers keeps my hot water bottle very, very warm for much longer than a synthetic cover, which is another good and useful thing to think about when you're selecting your yarn for a piece like this. And I went with these lovely shades of Drops Lima um, because I felt like they would go really well with the colours of my kitchen and my flat in general. However, I think that you could make this in so many different colourways. It also makes a really ideal gift if you're looking for something that will probably take you about a week to knit on and off and is, you know, there's no size, so it's suitable for anyone, any gender and sort of any age really to a certain extent. So it's a really, really great gift option. If you're interested in seeing all of the different colorways that people knit this up in, do head over to the Ravelry page. There are so many examples of beautiful color combinations 
um, it's quite inspired me to maybe cast on one for my mum. So I might dig around in my stash in the next few weeks and see if I've got a good quantity to kind of use up some scraps and make her something cozy for her hot water bottle. So yeah, all in all, the Maxine hot water bottle cover is a fantastic pattern with a lot of information and a lot of guidance about how to get the colour kind of combination that you really, really like. The instructions were extremely clear and I just really highly recommend this design. It's excellent and a great introduction for people who are a little bit kind of uh, worried about trying colour work for the first time. It's small, don't worry about it, just go for it if you need a hot water bottle cover, you won't regret it, I promise. <laughs> now those were my two kind of big finished objects. Apart from the other finished object that I completed in January, which was my bow sweater, I'll only add a really quick image of that in here and I'll give you the link so you can watch the full project video of this if you want. This was a recreation that I made inspired by a sweater that I saw and fell in love with on Instagram. And it was a really fun journey because I've never really done a recreation before. So if you're interested in seeing that, do be sure to check that video out. Now onto my works in progress, which there aren't many of because I am kind of indecisive about what to cast on. I keep on going between looking at really lacy, frilly kind of detailed pieces or almost like Scandi paired back, very elegant and chic, minimal kind of pieces. And I can't really decide who I want to be this year. So I may put up a poll over on my Instagram of a few different options that you could help me select with the yarn that I've currently got in my stash. <laughs> but one piece that I am working on now is something that many of you will have seen me starting on back last sort of a few weeks ago. And that is the May sweater by the designer Hannah Rimmon. The May sweater is one of Hannah Rimmon's designs that has been kind of floating around in my head for over a year, I would say. And since I saw it in the colour combination, I think it's the original kind of colour combination that she uses in her pictures, I thought, ah, there is something about this that is just speaking to me. So I luckily had a kind of similar brown already in my stash and I ordered the two balls of this sort of navy blue. Again, these are in Drops Alima and Drops Alpaca Silk, or actually the blue is in Kid Silk because they didn't have quite the right colour match for this shade. And I wanted to use up this quantity of the Lima and Alpaca Silk. That's the same stuff that I used to make this gorgeous Moby sweater because it's been in my stash for quite a while and it's quite a big quantity of yarn. So I wanted to make sure I used it Kind of most of it all in one go. If I have a few balls left over I may use them for a hat or some mittens maybe at some point later in the year but I'm happy to be using that up and so far I'm really excited by the fabric that I'm creating holding these two yarns together. I really enjoy using a combination of yarns that have two slightly different tones. You can see here that both of these yarns are shades of brown However, the fact that the alpaca silk is a little bit darker means that I do get a kind of almost mottled or like mild effect throughout the whole sweater that I think just elevates it a little bit. It adds something kind of intriguing to the fabric and it kind of almost makes the, the yarn combination look like more expensive and more luxurious than it actually is. Because these are both very well priced and quite basic yarns on their own but when you marry them together you're getting a combination that is just so much more interesting and unexpected than you would think when you just look at them separately. Of course the beauty with Drops Lima and I will admit I have fallen in love with Drops Lima, I actually have some more in a dark grey as well, is that it's very very sturdy but extremely soft and that's because of the fact that it's a combination of wool and alpaca fibres and it's also just so affordable. I think that I got this for three, sort of about three euros per ball, which is really reasonable because um, that's about 95 meters, I think, per ball. So you can make a full sweater for really not too much at all. From fibers that feel very soft and very, very warm and like very good sort of price to quality ratio. Now the May sweater, or I believe it's called the Model May over on Ravelry, is a gorgeous kind of like Nordic yoke colour work design. 
The colour work really reminds me of kind of an ornate lattice kind of gate and I really like how simple but effective the pattern is when it's knit up, especially when you're using yarns where the contrast is not too extreme because both of the colours that I selected are on the darker side so you're not getting a really stark contrast. I'm hoping that the colours will really mush together, especially with the help of those alpaca silk fibres to kind of blend it all and make it one uniformed, gorgeous, squishy piece. This, just like the Kimberly sweater, is knit from the bottom up. And again, my same kind of gripes about doing that apply. But I have gone for a more cropped fit with this piece. That's because I maybe envision wearing it with a shirt underneath and maybe some brown trousers. Again, trying to look more chic and more like minimal. I'm really hoping though that I did leave enough space for the body and that it won't look too cropped because now I'm looking at it, it does look very, very short next to the arms. However, I feel like I just have to persevere and I have to try, try it on. I have done some of the colour work as you can see here. So you can see that beautiful lattice pattern starting to take shape. However, I don't feel like I've done quite enough to really try it on and test that length. I will report back and sticking to my resolutions, I will frog it if I'm not happy. However, uh, I also think that the cropped look could be quite nice and it does kind of match up with the vision that I originally had for the piece. Now, as for the sizing, I decided to go for a much wider fit and Hannah Rimmon's sizing can be a little bit tricky. So I'm casting this on in an L because I want quite a significant amount of ease. Um, I think that you do have to pay quite a bit of attention to this because in a lot of her photos, I feel like the model wears it with a huge amount of ease, but she doesn't actually necessarily recommend that in her pattern. So if you just follow her recommended ease, it won't necessarily look like the pattern photographs that you're gonna see everywhere and probably fall in love with. And the issue of inconsistent sizing brings me to another thing that I've been trying to think about a lot um, when considering my New Year cast-ons, because I have this quantity of dark grey drops lemur, and I'm contemplating maybe doing a Louvre sweater by Petite Knit, However, I'm not really sure about what size I should go for. I feel like I should probably size up several times, as even with sweaters like this Moby sweater, which you can see is fairly oversized, I'm not entirely convinced about the fit of some of her designs when I've knit them up in my size, recommended by the pattern. I think this is probably because my slightly wider hips means that if I knit something that's for my bust size, it often clings and doesn't really correspond to my hip size. As always, every body is different, um, but that's definitely something that I've noticed when I reflect back on some of my older knits. And it's one of those things that I really want to bring forward when I'm contemplating what I'm going to cast on, what size I'm going to make it, and whether the thickness of the yarn will really lend itself to certain pieces and look the way that I hope it will look. Because I personally adore those really oversized sweaters that look really luxurious and comfortable and kind of effortless. But so far in my knitting journey, and now please tell me if you've had a different experience, I haven't really been able to cast on sweaters that really capture that look. I like them either to be very oversized or really quite fitted. Um, I kind of don't like the in-between. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this roundup of my January knitting. No, I have not finished 100 projects. However, I am very happy with the progress that I made and the fact that I finished up some of my older pieces and I got to share them with you. I really hope that I can bring this new sensitivity and mindfulness about the sizing and the shapes that I want into the rest of my knitting for the rest of the year because knitting takes so long. Sometimes you just have to sit down and frog something or really reflect on whether this is going the way that you want. It's heartbreaking to start over but I think that that in the end will make me wear my knits more. Because that's always my aim. I want to be able to wear my knits all the time, especially at this time of year when it's so cold. 
So yeah, do let me know if you have set yourself any New Year's knitting resolutions. I always love to hear the goals that people want to set for themselves. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Bye!